Assalamualaikum. I welcome you all to the 14th lecture of the course Management Organizational Policies and Practices. Uh, before moving on to uh, the contents of this lecture, I would like to give you a recap of lecture 13. So uh, for the lecture 13, we had a discussion on how uh, the information is managed in the organizations, uh, what are the best ways to manage the information and uh, what were the old ways of the in managing information and what are the new ways of managing information. Uh, we started off with the, the dif distinction between the raw data and the information and we saw that how uh, the raw data becomes useful when it can be applied meaningfully in the decision making process. Uh, right? And uh, then we saw the different characteristics of useful information. Uh, we saw that uh, um, information is useful only when it is complete right incomplete information is not useful because it uh, does not give us a complete picture and the managerial decision making may not be uh, at or at optimal level then we also saw that uh, information is useful when it is reliable of course when it is coming from an authentic source only uh, when it is validity and reliability of the information is certain um, only then that information is useful if the information is not reliable or it's not coming from a good source uh, then uh, that information again is not useful then in other criteria of uh, useful information that we discussed was the accuracy of the information uh, that uh, how accurate that information is if that again that information is not accurate then uh, what decisions that uh, the manager is going to make are going to be faulty and they are pro more prone to mistakes. Then we had a discussion that the timely information is useful information. If the, we do not receive the information on time, again we'll be uh, at the time of the decision making, we'll be making decisions uh, that 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 would be uh, that might be faulty and th that might be prone to more mistakes. So if we are receiving information after we have, ma have made our decisions or after the deadline have passed, then that information is not useful. Then we uh, saw that uh, uh, the information, there are certain costs which are attached to gaining the useful information. So information gathering uh, and information assembly and processing and uh, uh, the util utilization of the information, all the, those different processes of obtaining of the information till the decision making and the process of, of the information etc all those processes they come with costs right there are certain costs of this information of the useful information so the first cost is the acquisition cost that is the cost of acquiring the information when you have to obtain the information there are certain costs attached to the to the obtainment of the, that information and uh, i gave you the example of the state bank of pakistan here uh, that uh, what the state bank does uh, uh, and how do the different banks they benefit from the uh, the different reports that are generated by the uh, state bank right you could also come up with a number of e other examples that uh, w w when you have to get some information the cost that you have to incur for example just take the example of the f f of getting a survey done a questionnaire done you want to get certain information so there is some acquisition cost to get that questionnaire or the, to get that information from some questionnaires uh, you need to have um, uh, put in some costs such as the traveling costs it can be right cost of printing of the papers for the questionnaire right and the cost of providing the uh, raw, uh, raw material or uh, the uh, the other stuff to the uh, uh, potential respondents right and then uh, the cost of traveling back etc so there can be a number of uh, costs that can be attached to this acquisition uh, of information then uh, the the second type of cost that we discussed was the processing cost so um, uh, the cost that is attached to process the information that you have acquired right and uh, the processing cost that can be for example in the case of that questionnaire it could be that when you have obtained all the questionnaires now you have to uh, uh, process those that information you have to enter them uh, if you have obtained th those questionnaires manu manually you have to enter them into your system right and you have to process all that information categorize all that information so all that is the processing cost and then we discussed that the storage cost that where you have to store that information if you have to keep those questionnaires or those surveys manual and you have to do your analysis manually then again you need some storage space for them and uh, there's there's some, some storage costs attached 
write the cost of the warehouse for example or uh, if you have to put them in their software then it can be the cost of a computer it can be the cost of the software or uh, uh, or, or the uh, or the uh, any other application uh, software that you are going to run so all those costs are going to uh, be there for storing store there all the storage costs where you have to store your information right and then the retrieval costs we discussed that uh, when you have to how you have to retrieve the information that you have uh, stored right when if, if it is saved uh, stored manually then that retrieval uh, the process of the retrieval would be different the cost would be different and uh, if you have electronically stored your information um, in your various devices or um, uh, uh, then the your uh, retrieval costs they would be uh, different and then the communication costs how the information is communicated from one party or one person to the other person there are again certain costs that are attached to this uh, communication right then we had a discussion on uh, the strategic importance of information and there we discussed that how uh, the um, information or information technology it is only a competitive advantage or it is only an edge or it is only useful for the manager only when it can uh, it can be it can be strategic only when it is strategic right it has some strategic importance and the information has the strategic importance only when it is creating some value for the customers some added value for the customers and we had a discussion we, uh, that how uh, the 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 uh, information technology can provide value to the customers only when that information technology that are being used by your company it is uh, uh, it is not being used by the other companies they don't have that information technology if they also have it then it would be compar uh, uh, competitive parity and how that information needs to be valued by the um, yeah, by, by 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 your customers, right? And uh, if that is not valued by the customers in terms of the either it is uh, at the low, much lower cost than your competitors, or it is in uh, better quality than your competitors. If it is none of these two, uh, then uh, it won't be adding any value in the eyes of the customers. And then again, that information technology may not be useful, and it may not be strategic, and it may not provide any strategic advantage for the company. And uh, then we also had a discussion uh, on the, this resource-based view of information technology, that information technology would lead you to a sustainable competitive advantage only when that is uh, used by the, uh, the only when that is rare uh, that is uh, and that is not imitable by your competitors right and um, so there were a few characteristics of the information technology which can lead the company to the uh, strategic uh, to, to, to the uh, uh, strategic competitive advantage over the other companies and we also had a discussion on this uh, first mover mover advantage that how the first movers they obtain much greater share of the market market compared to the followers but we also discussed that since the information uh, technology costs are much higher in during the initiation period or during the early periods uh, that is why the first move the products that are uh, that the first movers bring into the market they are uh, normally high priced and they are since the information technology the, the its price falls very uh, very fastly and the uh, IT also becomes obsolete fastly therefore the uh, costs attached to this information technology they also decline very quickly and the followers uh, they um, take an advantage of entering the market with the same product but at a much lower price right so in so that in that kind of cases how the first movers they can e uh, be uh, face losses or they can sometimes fa the losses can be so high that they have to run out of the business then we uh, had a discussion on uh, capturing the information that how the information is uh, uh, captured what are the different ways of capturing the information we had a discussion of that uh, it, it is captured manually and it is captured electronically and under electronic capture we saw that uh, it is captured through the barcodes and it is captured through the electronic scanners and both of these devices they are very frequently used uh, uh, the, elect uh, the electronic scanners and the barcodes the barcodes often in the retailing outlets and in the shops you see that the um, uh, all the scanning is done through the barcodes and in the electronic scanners that we also frequently use uh, scan our documents the, to scan different images etc right and uh, then we saw that how the storing of information again it can be done manually or it can be done electronically 
and uh, uh, electronic ways of storing the information are uh, microfilm that we discussed in detail we discussed the cd-rom dvd and other option then we had a discussion on the data storage uh, storage tapes and we discussed that how and when these storage tapes are used primarily when the uh, secondary data managers they need to archive that then these uh, storage tapes are used and we also discussed that how hard drives are used by the managers and how they are the, uh, they are the fastest source of the retrieval of the information and uh, they, that is why the managers they uh, normally keep the primary data in uh, the hard drives right because that is easily and fastly accessible right so uh, we had a, had a discussion on the advantages and disadvantages of these different uh, storage devices and uh, then we had a discussion on uh, how the information is processed uh, we saw that companies uh, normally use three different ways of processing the information. One is the centralized processing, the other one is the distributed processing and the last one is the shared processing and how the in the centralized uh, processing is done through the mainframes and the distributed processing is done through the individual computers the desktops that are provided to the every individual and the shared processing is done through the network servers etc. So um, uh, we also saw that when do the companies or which companies use which types of uh, uh, systems or the processing, uh, how do they process information different companies and, and we saw that mainly or uh, commonly the large companies they, they use these mainframes because they have huge amount of data and information and uh, which they need to process so uh, they, they use the mainframes and the uh, smaller companies they more, more rely on the distributed and the shared processing but the large companies rely on a combination of all these three different types of uh, processing. Then we lastly saw that accessing and uh, sharing of the information uh, and knowledge how uh, there are different uh, modes of communication and sharing of knowledge and information and how it is accessed we discussed a number of ways such as emails the advantages and disadvantages of emails and uh, we also saw that vo voicemail how it is an uh, advantage what uh, for the for the companies or for the managers and we also had a discussion on the different teleconferencing options the document sharing and the application sharing etc so um uh, the the uh, this was the, our lecture for uh, on managing information and today we uh, start with our 14th lecture which is on uh, control so uh, after uh, this lecture you should be able to describe the basic control process you should be able to answer the question is control necessary or possible you should be able to discuss the various methods that managers can use to maintain control and you should be able to describe the behaviors, processes and outcomes that today's managers are choosing to control their organizations. So um, before starting with the control process, I would uh, like you to, uh, I would like you to, uh, like to give you a very brief um, understanding if some of you are a little confused about what do we mean by control. So, um, uh, I hope it's clear to you that uh, what we are meaning by control. Uh, control is uh, basically the uh, process in the, um, when we talk about managing strategically or uh, when we talk about the management in the organizations, of course the first step is that when you are uh, doing your strategic planning uh, at the top and then you are implement um, you are formulating your plans and then you are so you're setting your goals and targets your objectives your vision and mission statement according to your vision and mission statement you set your targets and goals and priorities and how you have to achieve them right so the different strategies that you need to achieve them and then you implement those plans at the different levels right so that there are intermediate plans there are the top level plans and, and there are the bottom level plans right and so all at all these different levels those plans are implemented to fulfill the organizational goals and objectives right so when when those plans are implemented then uh, you also need to see uh, the uh, that uh, you need to evaluate whether those plans have been implemented successfully or how far what is the effectiveness of your strategies or for your plans to achieve your goals right whether you are short of your goals or not right and uh, how you have to uh, control the performance or how you have to control uh, in the, the different functions in the organization as managers to achieve your outcomes 
So the control can be in a, in a number of directions. That can be the uh, how you have to control your output, how you have to control the quality, how you have to control the performance of employees, their behaviors. Uh, right, so um, uh, it can be about the, the processes, it can be about the design, so it can be about a number of things. So it is that how, in what areas your performance is deficient and how you have to control it or how you have to correct your performance. So it is basically an evaluation of your policies, The w w if there is any discrepancy between the intended organizational policies and practices and the implemented organizational policies and practices. And if there are some differences, then how you have to address those differences. What are the corrective actions that you need to take? What are the changes in your strategy, for example, that you need to make? right to uh, or uh, how you need to control certain areas right so the, uh, the th this is uh, this is control basically right so the control process it begins with establishment of clear standards of performance right uh, then um, it involves a comparison of actual performance to desired performance it takes corrective action to repair performance deficiencies it is a dynamic cybernetic process and it consists of feedback uh, control, concurrent control, and feed forward control. So this is the control process basically. We're going to discuss uh, this process stepwise in our upcoming slides. So first, we said that control, it is about establishing clear standards of performance, right? So first, of course, you need to have certain standards and only against those standards, you will be uh, judging your uh, your performance or you will be judging your outcomes and then find, uh, seeing that where and how much control is required, right? So uh, you need to set your standards, right? Uh, that what you have to do. For example, McDonald's, it has set a standard that it should uh, uh, make the uh, services to the uh, clients or it should uh, for, uh, uh, fulfill the customer demands or customer requests or the, uh, the order that the customers have placed it should uh, that should be met within uh, one and a half minute or two minutes right so that is the standard that the McDonald's had has set for its customer service so you need to have a standard right first you set a standard now how uh, you will see that what standard you need to set how do you set those standards that is the question right there are a few criteria on how you can set the standards. One, uh, the, your standards that you set, they need to be in line with your goals. That is, uh, this uh, standards should be set in a way that uh, it should be ensured that your organizational goals and objectives are being met. Or meeting those standards should mean that organizational goals are being met. So uh, Chrysler, for example, it um, uh, it, 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 it was uh, producing, uh, it gave you the example of Chrysler, or I think before as well in one of my lectures, that how it, uh, despite uh, producing at lower cost than its competitors, it was losing on its market share and profitability because um, uh, because it was uh, not uh, producing the differentiated or good designs of its products, right? And that is why it was not able to uh, gain its market share and profitability and it was not able to achieve its goal. Although it was meeting the standard of producing at lower cost. So we, uh, we also have another example of Best Buy, which is a seller of uh, uh, electronic products and uh, electronic appliances. So um, they basically uh, started off with their no receipt policy when you have to uh, return the, uh, the products or goods that you buy from the company. The customers were not required to produce the uh, payment slip or the receipt uh, of payment of the products uh, that they had bought when they wanted to return those goods or the, when they wanted to exchange those goods at the counter. So what it led was that it led to the reduced uh, profits uh, for the uh, Best Buy because some of the customers, what they would do is that they would just pick up the goods from the, uh, from the shelves and they would show them up at the uh, counter and well, they would uh, tend to uh, return those goods even without purchasing those goods. But there was no check on whether they had purchased those goods or not. So then uh, the Best Buy management, they... Uh, ex uh, they exerted a control here that the uh, a, a, any good that any customer wants to return or exchange, he must produce a receipt of that good or the payment receipt. 
of that good one only then that would be returned or exchanged so that was the control that was set by uh, uh, the best buy so um, why was that control set because they were not uh, uh, they were not meeting their goals right they were falling short of their goals so your goals they are a guidelines as to the standards that you have set whether they are fine or you need to revise your standards then uh, when you have to set your standards you need to listen to your customers right so like the McDonald's uh, it uh, it launched its big extra after the uh, the deals uh, that uh, uh, Burger King was producing and the increased attractiveness of the customers towards the deals of the uh, Burger King McDonald's uh, also launched its big extra in order to keep the demands of the customers in mind and this product was also very popular Although McDonald's management does not agree that they uh, they they launched this product in response to the Burger King's uh, product, but they uh, uh, but they launched it and it was a good success. So you need to listen to the customers when you are setting your standards. That what the customers want. Then you should determine that you sh you should set a benchmark for yourself and you should determine that what should be benchmarked, right? And uh, different companies they uh, uh, identify. Uh, their uh, their standards on the basis of the standards of the benchmarked companies like uh, if uh, uh, i give you an example of uh, an hospital that how it can um, uh, benchmark the uh, hotel services right because the admission process in a hospital uh, for a, a, a new patient uh, is the simil is similar to that uh, of the a tourist or a visitor in a, a hotel who also wants to book a room for 2 3 days or for a couple of days so um, yeah, but it is done much faster in the hotels the uh, then it is done in the hospitals it is a very laborious and time taking process in the hospitals when a patient needs to be admitted to the hospital where it should be very fast as well right but uh, then um, in this case how the hospital it need it can benchmark and other industry and other uh, hotel in an other industry uh, and then when it benchmarks and other hotel and in other industry then it needs to uh, spend some time and see carefully that what are the uh, standards that have been set in the benchmarked company how they have set them what are their performance goals how what processes they are using and how they are achieving those goals right so you need to have a fair understanding of the processes that those that the, that the benchmarked company is utilizing and you need to benefit from that and only then you can uh, uh, you, you can uh, improve your performance and improve your standards right so you need to collect data on other companies performance standards and you need to identify companies against which you can uh, benchmark uh, your standards right uh, then uh, there are co uh, certain uh, comparisons to the uh, to, to the uh, to the standards that uh, in the uh, control process one uh, first you need to uh, set some certain standards and then you need to make a comparison to those uh, standards so the uh, first step towards this uh, comparison is uh, that your uh, your quality of course it depends on the measurement and information system used right so uh, um, unless and until you have a good uh, measurement system of the making a comparison between the actual performance and the standard performance uh, you, of course you're going to have some faulty readings or some faulty results so you need to have a good system to measure the or make a comparison between the actual and the uh, stat set standards i would like to give you an example of regal cinemas uh, here what they um, uh, they have uh, they have implemented very tight controls in their system uh, in such a way that uh, if uh, a box of paper drink if a cup it is misplaced um, the theater manager is uh, charged full price of that uh, paper drink cup means that including the price of the coffee or tea whatever so it's charged the full price right so that is a kind of a penalty that is a control mechanism uh, in order to keep a check so the information system that they use or the computer system that they use that is uh, so uh, uh, control oriented and that is so uh, uh, that is so uh, efficient that it uh, um, identifies that where there is a lapse in the performance right so uh, the system identifies whenever there is uh, there are certain number of cups there misplaced or they are lost or they are broken or whatever and against that the manager is penalized right
and um, it's not only that uh, the system or the information system uh, used by the regal cinemas that is that is that identifies only the lapses in the performance but it also identifies where the performance of the managers is exceeding the expectations right so it gives both positive and uh, negative uh, feedback right it gives the uh, uh, the exact report of the performance of the managers if they are overperforming the, the standards or they are exceeding the expectations then the regal cinemas they uh, they uh, they do um, positively uh, uh, reward the uh, managers and if it is the other way then the managers are punished so you need to have a good system good information system that can identify that can measure the uh, that the uh, that can measure the performance right or that can me uh, measure the outcomes and against which the comparison can be made with the standards that have been set right then we have the uh, corrective action once you uh, have uh, some accurate system that can measure the performance and uh, then uh, you can take the corrective action and corrective action needs to be taken of course when there is a discrepancy between the uh, between the actual performance or and the the one that was set so when there is difference between the actual and uh, perceived or expected then you need to take certain corrective actions so you need to first identify what the performance deviations are and we know that if you don't have a good information system if we don't have good control process if you don't have uh, uh, good measures then it's it won't be it would be very difficult to identify even the problems in certain instances and uh, that is where many companies make great losses right when they are unable to identify that what the actual problem is uh, right um, uh, so there are a number of problems in a number of areas that keep going without the managers uh, ma management's notice uh, until the problems they become uh, huge and they turn into huge losses for the uh, for the management uh, for the organization right so you first need to identify the pro uh, the performance deviations then you need to analyze those deviations right and then the third step you need to develop and implement programs to collect them right so um, uh, I, unless and until you identify the problems you cannot develop and implement the programs to correct them uh, now here we have the example of New York City Hotel for you uh, which uh, is known for its first class service and uh, um, what was happening here in this hotel was that they were uh, making uh, continuous errors of not charging the uh, the clients for the, uh, the for for the for the for the room service on in um, on account of uh, the tea or anything that they uh, that was that is not included in the uh, bed and breakfast menu, right? So um, anything extra that other than that, like telephone charges. So when they were charging the customers, they were not including those uh, telephone charges in that uh, charge list or in the bill. So uh, it, it was, uh, of course, then coming on the company, and they were losing on this. So this was this is error, and also uh, the other mistake that they were making was that they were, uh, uh, if the two two different uh, uh, clients they were staying in the same room, they were sharing the room. Then in that case, also the separate charges for them they were not being incurred, right? So the company identified this mistake, and they took corrective action to uh, to reduce these this kind of errors, right? And uh, they uh, they implemented some stricter controls such as uh, uh, e the before at the night before the checkout like if the customer or the client has to check out tomorrow morning then at the night today the uh, customer the the manager it, he needs to com make a complete list of the different uh, ex uh, the different uh, utilities that the uh, client has availed and the different uh, charges that the client needs to pay against those utilities right so that sheet needs to be completed in the night and then there needs to be counter checks of those uh, different charges that the uh, the, the, the clients uh, needs to be uh, charged to and uh, this is how they uh, they implemented stricter controls at different levels and they uh, reduced uh, they, they, they these errors and they uh, saved uh, a lot of money on this and they increased their profitability um, then uh, we have an example or uh, we uh, uh, as a next step uh, to this uh, pro control process we see that it is a very dy dynamic and cybernetic process 
right so uh, by dynamic process we means that it is not a uh, one point process control right it's not that um, uh, you first uh, uh, need to set uh, you, you set standards then there is actual performance then there is desired performance and um, then there is a developed program or program for corrective action right so uh, it's basically uh, if you look at the uh, this figure here you will see that it is uh, not a one step process that you have to take certain measures or you have to take certain steps at one point in time like when the uh, it is a continuous process so you start off with setting your standards then you measure your performance then you compare your performance with the standards you identify the deviations you analyze those deviations then you develop program for corrective action then you implement the program for corrective action then you des uh, then you uh, after implementing that program for corrective action then you again see the desired performance and the actual performance and then you again uh, set standards and uh, again uh, measure performance so it is a continuous cycle right um, then we see that uh, uh, here I have for you an example of the uh, of Pepsi uh, what Pepsi does is that it uh, basically gives its advertisements in the most famous or the popular shows on the TV right so um, when uh, the advertisement of Pepsi starts on these different TV shows there are 70 people at the same time who sit and analyze uh, when the Pepsi advertisement is on that how is the response to the Pepsi's advertisement that how many people they are watching that advertisement how many customers are watching that advertisement and out of those what are the strategic customers of the company and who are the strategic and if whether the strategic customers are listening or their target market is being is uh, being, uh, is listening to those advertisements or not or they are watching those TV shows and listening to those advertisements or not or whether they need to uh, give their ads to some other uh, shows uh, etc. So there are 70 people who are sitting simultaneously in order to see that how and whom they have to target and where they have to target and what corrective action they need to take. So if there they see that their target market is not being ad uh, hit here then they uh, change their um, their targets right and uh, they move to some other uh, uh, other shows or somewhere they have to place their ads or uh, they change their adver advertising policy so it is a continuous process control is a continuous process you need to be on a checkout continuously right when you have taken corrective actions you again need to see that how those corrective actions are working right you again need to see that how your performance is changing now right and if your performance is f uh, falling on the uh, on the standards and if you reduce or lose your corrective uh, your controls then it may be that your performance again there is there becomes a deviation in your performance right so you continuously need to um, see uh, your goals and you continuously uh, need to uh, maybe sometimes adapt your goals according to the changes in the market and the external environment and accordingly your standards uh, um, might change right and uh, accordingly your uh, performance expectations might change your actual performance needs to be changed the corrective actions or, or the controls that you are uh, applying they may uh, change or they may need to be changed so uh, as I told you that it is uh, there, there are different types of the control one is the feedback the other one is a concurrent and the other one is the feed forward so uh, f under feedback control what happens is that you are uh, of course uh, you get the information after the performance has occurred right or after the performance deficiencies have occurred only then you are gathering the information right so um, uh, this means that under the uh, feedback process uh, sometimes you are there are certain pro performance deficiencies that are that can be very fatal or that can be very major or that can be very drastic for the company right but again the, 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 the as per this process you gather the information after maybe about one year or six months or so uh, after the performance lapses right uh, under the concurrent control what happens is that you gather the information about the performance deficiencies as they occur so it is basically trying to reduce the lapse between the performance deficiencies and the corrective action that uh, needs to be taken right so you try to keep it simultaneous right under the feed forward process it is basically really proactive approach of the managers right uh, and um, herein you are relying not on the outputs for your for the feedback but you're uh, more concentrating on the inputs you are concentrating on the input so that the performance deficiencies they do not occur in the first place right
so under the feedback process control what is happening is that the deficiencies have occurred and now you are trying to control those deficiencies under the concurrent you are trying to keep the process simultaneous that so that the uh, gap between the deficiency uh, the, uh, the deficiency gap and the feedback uh, gap that is controlled and you can try to minimize your mistakes right and in the feed forward process you are trying the, the deficiencies not to occur in the first place you are trying to design your processes and systems uh, in a way so is control necessary or possible uh, that is a question that is an important question is it necessary or is it possible because in certain cases uh, control may not be possible at all right so um, and uh, in certain cases control may not be necessary at all right so whether the control is necessary or not it can be a little subjective in uh, certain uh, situations right and uh, as per the understanding of the cer certain managers because ev every manager as i told you earlier he has its own his own style of management right and we'll be discussing more in detail about the leadership styles as well that how the different uh, leaders they uh, uh, they uh, they control the different employees right how they use different strategies to control different employees as per that their leadership style so as per the leadership style uh, some leaders they may use minimum controls and some leaders may be very control oriented right so it can also there are a number of factors there are a number of organizational policies there can be a number of departmental differences as well and uh, as per that some organizations and uh, they can be more control oriented and some can be less control oriented so the ones that are less control oriented it may uh, have this approach that uh, instead of controlling the employees try to um, autonomize them and try to give them more discretion and more power and try to let them be accountable for their own results or, or l l let the feeling of responsibility and accountability um, come in them right let them play give them certain boundaries and let them play so they can have this kind of approach as well right so uh, whether the control is necessary or not um, you need to uh, uh, really uh, uh, evaluate it for if we uh, if i give you an example of a company wherein um, uh, in a company there was a uh, nearby starbucks uh, you know it's a very international uh, coffee uh, store Mm, of pro coffee providers right uh, they are uh, they basically uh, it's just an example a hypothetical example if they open their uh, their outlet near a uh, near a company right and the employees of the company in their coffee break instead of uh, taking their coffee in the office uh, from the office uh, from the company's uh, uh, coffee machine if they start uh, going to uh, outside and uh, to the starbucks uh, coffee shop and uh, taking coffee and drinking coffee there and then coming back right so of course that process would take much longer than um, uh, than taking the coffee in the company right so uh, maybe that 15 minutes then if you go outside they, they turn into 20 or 25 minutes right so uh, what should the manager do should the manager control uh, this uh, action of the employees or this behavior of the employees is it wrong uh, if they are availing a little longer coffee break or not so uh, uh, different people they may have different opinions uh, on this issue right some may think that it's uh, it's wrong when the company has said 15 minutes it should mean 15 minutes they should return within 15 minutes and uh, some of the managers they uh, might have the opinion that um, uh, out of the uh, out of the eight to ten hours of work, if even if they avail fifteen twenty minutes or twenty five minutes of coffee break, even for two times or three times, that doesn't matter, right? So um, uh, that that can be uh, 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 truly refreshing for them to go outside the office, their their to go off off site and uh, uh, get refresh up, refreshed up. They can have better better ideas. They can come up with uh, back with more fresh ideas. They can meet the different people. They can meet the some of their customers as well. They can meet the potential customers as well. They can uh, gather a number of um, information from those potential customers or from their current customers they can get some feedback which can be useful for them and um, uh, things like that so there are both uh, they can be the uh, the uh, positives and uh, negatives of this and there can be different views on whether uh, this action of employees should be controlled or not right so uh, 
um, you really need to think as a manager whether and how much control is necessary then you also need to see that if control is necessary is it possible to control so sometimes cert certain situations can also be created where control is necessary but it's not possible to control then what would you do so then managers need to see what are the different options available to them if it's uh, necessary to control but it's not possible to control right so let's see all these three uh, different um, perspectives first we see that is more control necessary we see that they see that uh, or we say that there is control loss when a situation or a in a situation or a behavior in which um, um, in a situation in which the behavior and the work procedures they do not conform to standards right so uh, when of course you are unable to meet the standard that was given to you or that was set for you uh, or your procedures they're falling short of the standards then uh, uh, you see that there is a control loss so um, here I have an example of uh, fidelity investment fund which wrongly reported 1.2 billion dollars loss as profit so this is uh, you know one of the uh, very uh, very well known well reputed investment uh, company investment fund company fidelity what they did was that they wrongly reported 1.2 billion dollar of the company's loss as uh, their profit so it turned uh, the, their profits they were they started showing up of 2.4 uh, billion dollars right since it was a big mistake so it was quickly identified and corrected by the company's accountants and it did not uh, uh, lead into any losses for the company because the problem was quickly identified and corrected uh, but what happens was that this uh, mistake and a similar mistake that uh, was uh, done or that was uh, that occurred in this company a few months ago uh, that led to a very bad reputation of this company in the eyes of the investors specifically right so um, that happened because of the control loss they were making they, there was loose control they were not tighter controls and as a result this kind of errors they were happening time and again although they did not uh, incur any financial losses for the company but they did incur uh, the uh, reputational losses for the company then uh, we see the uh, uh, see that we see that there are two aspects which are important uh, when uh, we have to decide whether control is necessary or not first one is the degree of dependence so degree of dependence is the extent to which a company needs a particular resource to accomplish its goals right so in other words the manager or the company needs to see if a particular resource is critical for that company or not right so if that resource is for example a source of uh, competitive advantage of that for that company then that is a critical resource right so you cannot do without that resource right or you won't be your standing won't remain the same without that resource right or your major share or your major profit is coming from that resource through that then that is a critical resource for you right so your degree of dependence on that resource is then much much greater right so you need to really exercise control so the control is necessary to for that resource which is critical for the company where you have greater degree of dependence here I have for you the example of the um, airlines that require uh, most seats to be filled up before they they fly right and uh, it is the for in, for in the airline industry the number of seats uh, that are filled because uh, uh, as you understand that uh, the uh, uh, most of the costs they are fixed um, of uh, flight right they are fixed expenses so if the number of seats if the maximum number of seats are filled it means that the company is earning maximum revenues for on that particular flight right but if there are lesser and lesser uh, passengers then uh, your fixed cost they will remain the same right you have to incur the same cost for that flight but uh, your revenues will fall down right and as a result uh, you your profitability will reduce and in, in, uh, if the passengers are really low then you might enter into losses as well 
right so that that is a critical resource the number of passengers per flight they are a critical resource or they are uh, for the for, for the airlines and uh, they have greatest degree of dependence on that resource number of seats to be filled so the companies uh, the airlines for this they have established very strong very sound uh, computer systems or uh, software the management information systems wherein the um, what happens is that they are uh, basically uh, under those systems uh, the reservations are done um, uh, online in such a way that uh, the fair price it fluctuates in response to the demand from the uh, potential passengers so if there are more and more passengers then the fair price will automatically uh, fall so it adjusts itself so it, it falls and if the passengers are uh, are uh, lesser potential passengers or travelers then the fair price uh, will will fall and if the passengers are more the fair price will rise right so uh, this is what uh, happens uh, by this through this electronic system or the computerized system right so um, you must have noticed that uh, sometimes you get the last minute flights which are like the plane is uh, is going to uh, take off in uh, next one day and before a day over at, at the night then uh, tomorrow the plane is going to fly and uh, day before that you are getting a ticket um, as low as a few dollars uh, right and in some cases they are really in a few dollars so this is what these computerized uh, systems do they respond to the changing demand by the customers and uh, in the in the beginning period when there are a, a few weeks or months remaining in the flight that flight price the ticket is expensive and uh, then uh, uh, when uh, the it is about to fly the last minute flights they are you can get cheaper tickets so um, and then we have this uh, uh, resource flow right that is the other uh, area which will uh, dictate to the managers on how much control is uh, on uh, whether the control is necessary or not other than the resource dependence so here it is the extent to which a company has easy access to critical resources right so what is the flow of those resources right so that is important and how much is uh, so if the the your, your your certain resources are very critical for you right and uh, uh, the their flow how you can uh, uh, ensure the easy flow of the resources that are critical to you or easy access of the resources that are critical to you you might need to exercise certain controls to get easy access of those resources right so uh, here I have for you an example of uh, the drought that hit uh, the San Antonio uh, for uh, almost one year and as a result to that the city council of San Antonio they uh, Texas they uh, basically they uh, put up the restrictions uh, on the amount of water that could be used in the uh, pools at home or uh, for, for the landscaping and for the watering of plants and gardening etc so they really restricted the amount of water that was to be used right so what were the consequences for uh, certain uh, certain companies uh, for this against this uh, uh, policy of city council which is which was about to be implemented so um, uh, Leif Zars uh, is a very famous, uh, is the owner of the very famous Gary's Pools in San Antonio. So he's basically into this pools business. Is he constructs these pools in the houses, right? So uh, what it was a biggest concern for him because water was the critical resource for him. Because of course the demand for his pools they would uh, they, they they would stand nowhere they would, that would significantly reduce if the city council uh, put restrictions on the uh, use of water for the pools right so uh, he, he knew that this this uh, this restriction in the resource flow it could be very critical for his company and he might be even running out of business right so uh, he uh, what did he do to uh, to ensure the flow of the, this critical resource he came up with a very intelligent idea he uh, basically developed a few uh, plastic shields that the uh, households or the customers they could put on their pools after using the pools they could put them <coughs> those shields on the pools and that would uh, significantly reduce the uh, the evaporation of water because of sun so um, 
that was the idea that was put up by uh, this uh, man leaves uh, and uh, uh, and this was the idea that was put in front of the city councils that these shields they would uh, reduce the evaporation to a greater very great extent right so this is how we could ensure the speedy or the good flow of the critical resource for his business then uh, uh, there are certain uh, of course uh, costs of controls as well when we talk about the uh, possibility of um, controlling right when we first identify that okay it's important to control right okay that resource is really you are dependent on that resource right <coughs> that's why you need to control right and uh, that resource is very critical for you then um, is it possible for you to control or not so if uh, there are certain costs that are attached to this control right what is the regulation cost like the legal risks that are attached uh, through uh, liability insurance etc and th these are specifically in the case of the pharmaceutical companies in the US the, those companies they had to enter into this liability insurance etc and because of that they re significantly reduced the number of vaccinations that they were uh, producing right so there can be a number of legal risks uh, that can be attached to uh, the, the, to this control process right and, and then there can be a number of unintended consequences as well uh, um, to this control process so if, have, if you are introducing a uh, um, uh, certain controls in your organization there can be certain unintended consequences for those controls as well such as uh, in the case of the Delta Airlines which is very one of the very biggest and famous airlines of America so what happens is that it uh, uh, it attempted to reduce the cost per seat mile from 9.7 to 7.5 percent right and it uh, th that that was its target right to re reduce its cost and it actually uh, reduced the cost but how it reduced the cost what it did was that it um, reduced the number of mechanics per gate so uh, previously there were there was every, every one mechanic for every gate from where the flight of delta was to take off right so per one uh, one mechanic per gate right but then uh, they changed uh, their uh, when they in an attempt to reduce their cost they uh, reduced the number of mechanics to uh, one mechanic per three gates right so of course the natural consequence of this was that the flights they started getting delayed right for so uh, when uh, one plane has to take off but the mechanic is in an other gate in uh, uh, and busy in repairing an other um, other plane of course the pla the the plane in the other gate is going to uh, the the flight is going to be delayed there so result was that this airline it uh, came on the last amongst the other domestic airlines on in the list of timely arrivals so it was the last one to arrive on time as a result of this control that they exercised in order to reduce the costs so uh, it has very important implications for management when you are trying to control something you need to see that what are the different costs which which are associated with the control and whether those costs are um, those ben the benefits that you are getting they are exceeding the costs that you have to bear or not right so uh, you need to do this cost benefit analysis if your costs of controlling they are greater than the benefits that are coming out of that control then that's fine but if the um, then uh, then you need to ask yourself that what you have to do uh, there is there any alternative way that you have to uh, take or what right uh, so um, in this case the delta it needs to see that uh, by arriving late how uh, um, how it is being perceived by the customers right and uh, how uh, whether it's uh, customer ratio it, it has fa fallen what uh, how the changes have occurred in the eyes of the customers whether they are shifting to the other airlines or what's happening right so it needs to make certain analysis of the situation and then make its decision on what it has to do so and um, other thing that you need to see when you are uh, trying to exercise control is the see the cybernetic feasibility right so if, which is the extent to which it is possible to implement each step in the control process 
right so is it possible to uh, first to set standards because uh, in certain companies certain nature of jobs is like that you cannot set objective standards of performance right and then there you need to see that uh, whether the control is possible or not when the or when the when the output is really subjective then what kind of control you need to uh, put on and whether it is possible to uh, put some control measures or not right and uh, then uh, how you will be going to make a comparison with the standards right and how the feedback process is going to uh, be so all the st different steps whether it's possible to implement all those steps uh, you need to see so if a step it cannot be implemented then control may not be possible right for example in the case of the travel policy of companies so uh, uh, normally the companies have the travel policy that when they have to the clients they have to do the official trips then they need to uh, get the books uh, the tickets booked uh, through the company but many times many employees they are not doing that they on uh, they do the bookings online they do the bookings themselves as per their own convenience right so here it's then difficult to control so when control is not uh, uh, is necessary but it is not possible to control it's difficult to control then the companies can exercise quasi control so one they can reduce the dependence on the uh, on the pro uh, on the resources product or service and on which they are they were critically dependent so they can choose to abandon or change their goals and they can uh, when control over a critical resource is not possible right so um, they they uh, when it's not possible to control a critical resource one option that they are left with is that they reduce their dependence by changing their goals right so here i give you an example of pepsico which will uh, make you understand this point um, that <clears throat> they basically they started off with the three distinct uh, businesses so, uh, one was this uh, the, the in in uh, drinks business the uh, fam most famous the pepsi then the mountain dew and the other one was the fast food business uh, among which they had the restaurants pizza hut kfc and then they have the snack foods such as free to lay so when they diversified their resources and they put their resources into all these different kinds of businesses they had to face very fierce competition from coca cola and they could not put as much of their own resources into the pepsi to fight the competition with the coca cola so resultantly what they did was that they reduced the dependence on their on the uh, on the critical resources so they put off some of their resources from uh, the uh, from the restaurants business and they sold uh, their restaurants for um, 11 billion dollars right and they invested all that money uh, that money mainly in pepsi right in order to because then they change their strategic goals right so one option is that you change your strategic goal uh, um, uh, when you want to uh, uh, when you it's difficult for you to control right so this is the one way of control that you change your uh, strategic goals you reduce your dependence and the second way is that you restructure your dependence so uh, which is the exchange dependence on one critical resource for uh, dependence on an other resource so here we can have the example of the private planes for commercial planes that can fly to 5500 different airports instead of only 550 nationwide airports in case of commercial planes so there are a number of advantages of uh, restructuring dependence the new critical uh, resource it may be more controllable and it may not require any control at all and the company may not need to change its goals as it has to when it is reducing its dependence on some critical goal uh, some critical resource so there are different methods of control such as the bureaucratic the objective the normative the concertive and self-control so bureaucratic, bu bureaucratic control as you all would be familiar it is more to top down right where you have set policies procedures and uh, through those policies and procedures you are uh, which you have set for the employees you influence their behavior and you control their uh, the the employees right so employees are often resistant uh, uh, to change because it is very in inefficient and inflexible system the bureaucratic system or the bureaucratic organizations the objective control can also be used by the managers right where <coughs> the they basically try to control through the objective measures right and then they can also use the behavioral control where they regulate the employees actions and behaviors and not the uh, uh, the output 
or, or and not the objective right they are trying to control the employee behaviors because they know that certain kinds of behaviors will lead to certain kinds of outputs or uh, performances so they are controlling the employee behavior and in the output control they are trying to control and measure the employee outputs and uh, not the behaviors right so they are focusing on the outcomes uh, normative control is when the company is has certain established values and beliefs which are the guidelines for the employees on how they have to act in certain directions and uh, they are those norms and cultures of the organization and the company uh, they are basically the guidelines for the employees uh, uh, to act in certain ways right and uh, the companies they can also in certain cases use the stories uh, uh, to convince and their employees that in what ways they should behave what are the desired ways of behaving and in the concertive control it's basically a group based measure uh, wherein the, this control is basically exercised in case of like we have the concept of the autonomous work group. So uh, what is happening in those autonomous work groups is that they are operating without the managers. They set their own goals and the policies, the group goals, group policies, group strategies to achieve their targets. And that is how they uh, uh, th th their activities are controlled through group. Right, and the self-control is where all the employees they are, uh, they, 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 certain boundaries are set for all the employees. Right, it is not an anarchy wherein there are no boundaries and everyone is do free to do whatever he does. But there are certain boundaries, and within those boundaries, all the employees they are supposed to set their own policies, rules, and reg uh, and procedures, and they are uh, supposed to, for, to to get to achieve their goals and to achieve their targets. So employees monitor their own progress. Then uh, we have this uh, balanced uh, scorecard approach, which uh, basically uh, uh, covers uh, very comprehensively all the different uh, perspectives on uh, that, that 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 an organization needs to look. So previously, organizations they need to uh, focus only the, on the financial uh, ratios, on the financial aspect of whether the company is performing well or not or where the control is necessary but balanced scorecard approach says that it's not only the financial approach or the financial perspective but the companies also need to look after the other perspectives such as the customer perspective the internal perspective and the innovation and learning perspective uh, other than the financial perspective and it needs to exercise the control in all these different directions right so the in the, under the financial perspective as i told you that it's through the balance sheets it's through the income statements the cash flow analysis is done and different financial ratios such as the liquidity ratios the profitability ratios etc they are calculated in order to arrive at uh, the certain figures and in order to see the financial performance of the company and on the basis of that the control process uh, is initiated or uh, it is the corrective actions are taken under the customer pers perspective the company also needs to understand the customer defections that is the what is the uh, rate at which the customers they are uh, leaving the company and the managers they need to understand that it's the uh, uh, the rate at which the, com the uh, if the existing customers they leave the company that is much more expensive that is five times more expensive than for the company to earn a new customer right so they need to uh, to understand this uh, concept of customer defections and uh, they need to understand that they also need to exercise certain controls on the areas other than the financial area on the customer defections area so uh, they can uh, the customers who have left their company they can take feedback from those customers because they are the best people who will be giving you best feedback on why they left the company the existing customers they may not give you a good feedback even if they see some problems in your product right but it's those customers who have left they will be giving you a good feedback on what are the problems with the product and how it they perceive it, the other competitors product better over their product and how they get that can be improved right so uh, then the company also needs to measure the quality it also needs to see the internal perspective how uh, it, what is the value of that product how, how it is perceived in the eyes of the customers how it is uh, relative to the competitors products or services whether it is uh, meeting the expectations of the clients w w uh, in how much time you are bringing your product to the market what is the life cycle of your product and things like that right and uh, then uh, you, of course the waste management you need to have strategies for waste uh, prevention and reduction right uh, so uh, uh, you need also need to have the innovation uh, and the learning perspective is uh, where you also need to see that how you are or your company is working other than not only the controlling of the waste and the uh, pollution uh, where 
how you are disposing of that waste, whether you are into recycling and re reusing, like the McDonald's, it started a very big uh, mac recycle program in, under which it recycles the uh, uses the re recycling recycled equipment right and um, so um, how you what are your policies to minimize the waste production right and how you have to reuse that how you have to treat the waste how you have to dis dispose of the waste you need to think into take it uh, all this into consideration and you need to see that w whether your company is innovating or not how it is learning how uh, how it is responding to the changes in the external environment whether there is uh, there there are continuous improvements in the product it's not only about the new product development but also about the changes in the or improvements in the existing product to stay in line so it is all these different perspectives that the companies need to see um, uh, when they are evaluating uh, their performance it's not only about the financial perspective and that's what the balanced scorecard approach says that it's also the customers it's also the quality it's also the innovation and learning it's also that environmental perspective it's also from the perspective of the employees it's also from the financial ratios so uh, even if the company is not doing very good on the financial ratio ratios its market share is declining but it might be that its customer base is daily uh, getting very strong and it's uh, getting sound and the quality is improving and then uh, um, maybe in the the next few years the company's profitability and shares them they, they will also uh, increase so um, in the short term profitability uh, or uh, the short term ratios they uh, may indicate that the company is going bad but the other indicators may indicate that in in the long term the company is going to improve right so we need to consider all these different perspectives so with this we come to an end of uh, today's uh, lecture which wherein we discussed the control process in very much detail i hope you enjoyed today's lecture um, I thank you all for your patient hearing. See you again. Allah Hafiz.